Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're at. It is the Earthmaster out here on a Wednesday, April 24th, 2024 is the date. It is about uh, 7.14 a.m. That's going to be California time, but I'm out here in the beautiful state of Texas, where it's uh, 9.14 Central Time. Latest activity uh, overnight. Looks like we've seen some further activity around the uh, Japan area. Also, some movement there in Northern California. Got a 3.3 coming in to the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone, just offshore here. 21 kilometer deep, 3.3. Handful of other earthquakes here in this area. Uh, definitely keeping an eye on the west coast here recently. Um, more importantly, we got a, a decent earthquake activity uh, event popping up at Yellowstone National Park. This is the uh, latest overview. I know I covered this a little bit last night. Well, checking this uh, this morning still shows quite a bit of earthquake activity overnight. And uh, so far in the early morning hours of this Wednesday, these are all earthquakes popping up here on that digital seismograph station you see there. Mainly located around the, uh, looks like it's around the Maple Creek area uh, as the epicenter of this earthquake activity. Again, there's some from yesterday. I think the largest that the USGS is reporting, let me double check here and see what they have. Uh, I believe they reported a three in there. There's a couple twos, couple ones. 2.8, so it looks like for now 2.8 is gonna be the largest, but this was uh, from yesterday. It doesn't look like they put out anything uh, today, a couple. See these, a uh, couple twos, couple ones. There's a couple twos here this morning. But uh, goodness, they yeah, have got a, a decent earthquake swarm kicking up here. They show about 23 earthquakes on the map in the last 24 hours. But, uh, you know, looking at this graph here, when I just showed you the Maple Creek, looks like there's way more than 24 earthquakes here. Uh, overnight, you know, there's probably, I'm guessing these are going to be the two pointers. Looks like another recent two here within the last hour or two. Uh, there's there's probably a good, oh man, I don't know, 50, 60 earthquakes here. If you count every single one of these spikes on the uh, seismograph lines. Um, but you put that with yesterday's activity as well, and we're probably well over 100 earthquakes or so uh, across this area of Yellowstone National Park. Some of the twos are showing up distantly across the uh, area like uh, Mary Lake, these are gonna be the two pointers. And some other earthquakes showing up here uh, across this area to the south southeast. So uh, yeah, we'll continue to watch that because uh, it's been a while since we've had a little earthquake activity. I think I may have jinxed it here a night or so ago. I mentioned that uh, it's been a while since we've seen any decent earthquake activity at Yellowstone and goodness, yeah, we uh, looks like we stirred it up a little bit. Nothing big. Um, you know, obviously Yellowstone is a super volcano, but uh, it's GPS coordinates far, or not coordinates, but uh, inflation details over the last couple years has been uh, on a decline. We haven't really seen any inflation going on there uh, across the Yellowstone area. If, if for some reason we've seen that along with, you know, large scale earthquake activity, I'm talking about fours, fives, and sixes in a continuous manner, then we would be talking about maybe uh, a future eruption, but everything is pretty quiet in terms of uh, volcanic activity. This is out of the caldera region to the northwest. Uh, now the Hebgen Lake area up here back in, I um, can't remember when it was, it was the 70s, they had a, uh, a decent large 7-pointer, 7 7.0 earthquake. I think it may have been a 7.4, 7.5. So there's quite a few fault systems that run through uh, this area. Aside from you know the Yellowstone super volcano fault systems all over Idaho, uh, Montana, Wyoming, so these look like at least with the location here on the map, looks like these are stress related uh, due to faults out here, and that's why you know I say keep an eye on the West Coast because obviously we got uh, we got some strain out here against this area. Where's my uh, where's my view here? Looks like the land has disappeared. All right, there we go. So what do we have out here along the West Coast? Let's check this out. One earthquake in the last hour. Out here in the hazard zone, the 
2.4. I call this the hazard zone because it's just off the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault on the North American side of the plate boundary here where uh, we don't really see a whole lot of earthquake activity but this is where some of the strain that uh, may be obviously accumulated here along the plate boundary would show up uh, when it's getting to the point of you know maximum uh, what's the word I'm looking for accumulation of, of strain along this plate boundary of course the southern branch here capable of producing a 8.1 earthquake is uh, what the uh, scientists and seismologists and uh, all sorts of uh, people tend to believe that uh, it is accumulated up here as far as the strain goes an 8.1 is possible here on this southern branch of the San Andreas Fault so we'll continue to watch that overall regionally here across Southern California has been elevated uh, we see an activity stirring up here off the coast of Tijuana last night it looks like we did have a couple more earthquakes here this morning as well including a 3.5 there in that mix there's a couple different uh, trough zones out here that sit off here uh, just off the southern california coast um, you know in, in general if you look at this from a visual perspective of the dynamics out here it just shows that there's quite a bit of strain specifically against the plate boundary here uh, in southern california uh, Northern California, as I mentioned, a handful of earthquakes up here at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. So that's uh, that's one we got to watch, right? There's so many fault systems that are well overdue. All right, out here in Texas, I'm actually out here in the uh, Sweetwater, Texas area right now. Um, last night and yesterday was absolutely crazy. Had uh, an eventful day, but also one of the worst days in terms of... Uh, what could go wrong will go wrong uh, with two flat tires <laughs> goodness um, so yeah pretty crazy day yesterday uh, earthquake activity around the Puerto Rico area somewhat heightened up here but looking at today's model doesn't look like we're seeing too much uh, activity stirring up here the latest one in this area of the Caribbean plate shows a 4.5 back over here against the uh, middle America trench Atlantic Oceans, this movement from yesterday, I believe. Actually, uh, yeah, the, the uh, 23rd, about 8.40 in the morning. So we're just still in the 24-hour threshold. Let's see what else we got here across the globe. Um, this is only the USGS. So let me add on um, EMSC as well. I normally try to keep them on here uh, just to cover everything. see if that will kick up or not and uh, I'll get the live stream up and running at home uh, you know something happened I think somebody pulled the plug on me at home I don't know how or why um, but when it seems like when I'm away from the area away from my home base here things start to go uh, negative on my stream at home so uh, I'll just uh, continue to oh you know what happened here this is the uh, this is still one of the older versions of the Earthquake 3D program, so it looks like I have to uh, get that set up or updated. So for now, we'll have to use the uh, 2.5 map for the USGS because they've recently updated their servers there on the EMSC model. So uh, this is still the older uh, Earthquake 3D globe that uh, it's not going to be able to connect to the EMSC, but uh, USGS, last 24 hours or so uh, across the globe. Looks like Iceland out here, definitely getting some, or at least south of Iceland along the plate boundary. Things getting amplified out there. Uh, let's go check out the Iceland earthquake map and see if anything's popping out there. Um, doesn't look like all this activity down south has affected anything up north yet. Um, but kind of keeping an eye on it. Grindavik area here around our area of interest with the ongoing eruption showing some earthquake activity where the um, the uh, one active vent is. Let's go check this out real quick and see what's going on. Live from Iceland is the site. Let's see what we got here. Yep, still got one active vent there. Looks about the same as it has for a little while. Not seeing any major new activity. 
again with this activity stirring up south here along the plate boundary across the uh, oceanic rift zones here we'll definitely watch Iceland because it could have uh, an adverse effect on what goes on up here obviously spreading seafloor center what happens when you get that that obviously means that uh, there's some increasing uh, magma below the surface there all right uh, across the rest of the Pacific most of this earthquake activity from yesterday and uh, there's the activity in Japan today a couple earthquakes uh, so far this morning got a 5.1 just off the east coast here of Japan about 55 kilometers deep into that area the Taiwan area the region of the earthquake swarm seen some fours yesterday we've only had one four after midnight that's gonna be a 4.9 um, still keep an eye on that area this region seen a bunch of earthquake activity here recently and uh, let's see what we got for a total tally here if I pull in um, let's see that should be 4.1 and above I believe it shows 4.5 but uh, I think they should throw in 4.1 because there's a whole bunch of fours in here so uh, even though they mentioned 4.5 up here hmm. uh, 61 earthquakes in the last week uh, including a couple sixes here so uh, I believe this is all aftershock from the 7.4 that struck earlier this month again this just came out of the blue and um, was looking likely that we would see a larger quake following all this activity still possible because um, we had all that movement and then all of a sudden it stopped and now we're getting a couple fours a little bit of migration here to the north this area definitely capable of producing something much bigger than a 7.4 like they've seen earlier this month. So we'll continue to watch the Taiwan area. It's definitely a, an interesting event unfolding out there. All right, uh, what else we got here? Anything going on across the east coast of the states? Look, looks pretty quiet. One earthquake out here in New Jersey from yesterday. Not, uh, not a whole lot going on out there today. So. Let's check out the solar ham sites, see what's going on out there in the space world. This one doesn't look like it's, uh, is he down? Looks like, uh, it looks like Kevin is down. Wait, oh, that's weird. All right, back up. A little bit of flaring way out there on the eastern or a western limb of the sun. Looks like a little bit of uh, eruptive activity from that region that had been facing Earth for quite a while. There was a, a pretty large complex of sunspots out here now drifting further out of sight, out of mind. But we're still seeing some of that flaring activity with some sea flare activity currently right now. You can see that showing up there on the solar flare detection chart. Uh, there are numerous sunspots that are facing us. The most recent magnetogram image shows that large active region you know just about ready to crest over here uh, and get out of view off the western limb and uh, we have numerous sunspots here but uh, goodness it almost looks like they've uh, deteriorated overnight but uh, we'll continue to watch these 20 percent chance for an x flare right now m flare at 75 c flare at 99 percent chance and uh, no major wars in the forecast storm prediction center see what we got here for today's activity I'm literally right here in this zone right now sweet water areas right in that 15% chance uh, we do have a 2% chance for tornado activity today I think the main threat is going to be some large hail uh, and some wind gusts as well down here across this area of Texas uh, tomorrow a bigger event with a, a probability of some significant tornado activity into western Oklahoma uh, portions of southern Kansas and uh, northern Texas as well but there's a huge area of severe weather concern uh, for tomorrow we got wind and uh, some major big-time hail threats out there as well uh, and this covers a large portion of the population out here uh, we'll be out here kind of covering this um, over the next few days and uh, trying to avoid any further flat tires. It was just an unfortunate deal. I pulled off the side of the road to um, just slow down 
because we had some large hail falling from a supercell thunderstorm that we were uh, following and uh, I just happened my luck I just happened to run over a couple boards just off the side of the road hidden in the grass that had nails uh, and the nails of course came out as I rolled over them but uh, left a hole two flat tires <laughs> out in a big thunderstorm with some hail falling down that was not fun normally I would I would be jumping up and down for a, a nice thunderstorm like that but uh, when you're out there trying to fix a tire and trying to uh, make sure you don't have any rotation above you for its tornado potential then it gets a little on the little on the sketchy side uh, there was a four pointer down into the Gulf of California it looks like uh, you can see that line of activity stretching up and down the plate boundary here from Northern California all the way down there to the Gulf obviously got some adjustment taking place there so we'll keep an eye on California keep an eye on Yellowstone in terms of earthquake activity not volcanic activity this thing's not gonna blow I mean eventually it will but it's not looking uh, like anytime soon so um, yeah hope everyone enjoys their day stay safe out there we'll be out and about a little bit later on this afternoon here in Texas for the uh, severe potential here today so make sure you guys tune in for that we'll do a live stream or two on that uh, and later um, I got someone to go over and uh, fix the uh, issue that I'm having at home with the live stream um, I'm able to you know obviously access my computer from a remote location but something has prevented me from doing that either a power failure or something else so I have to have someone go over there real quick and double check it and I'll try to get the live stream back up later this afternoon as well. Once I do, uh, you guys will see it. So, All right, um, yeah, stay safe out there. Keep an eye on the West Coast and uh, we'll chat you guys a little bit later on. Have a good day.